Okay. Alright. So, you ready? Yep. Okay. So, the first question is, when were you born? September 27th, 1943. September 27th? Yep. Okay. Uh... What does the Cold War mean to you? Uh, approach it from two aspects. Uh, when I was at that time, depending on when you think the Cold War began, I didn't know a thing about the Cold War. I was uh, two years old uh, when the war ended, World War II ended. I was seven years old. Uh, in 1950, post-war. Uh, so the 50s, when the Cold War name uh, became popular, was something that I was not aware of, I would say, until I got into high school. But looking back, the Cold War was... It, it, in essence, a, a an arms race. Uh, as you know, uh, the United States had dropped an atom bomb on two Japanese cities that basically ended World War II mm -hmm. in the Pacific. And the United States thought that they had the monopoly on fission explosions. And as it turned out, they didn't. The Russians were close behind, closer than the United States thought. And they exploded a nuclear device, I think in the late 40s. And by 1950, they had the atom bomb. Mm. So the race was on. And it was, at, it, uh, philosophically, it was a battle between communism, policy of communism, and democracy, at least that's the way the United States and the Soviet Union looked at it. And the characteristics of that confrontation were nuclear arsenal development at a rapid pace, military deployment all over the world, most notably facing off in Eastern Europe, propaganda, espionage, economic embargoes, and the space race. They were all wrapped up into one. So that was the Cold War. Also, sports rivalries. Yeah. The Soviet Union against the United States. You can look back into the 50s and um, the battle was on for superiority in every aspect. So that's basically the Cold War. The Cold War, as we know, started right after the end of World War II, probably formalized as a policy by the Truman Doctrine. I don't know if you've studied the Truman Doctrine, 1947. Yeah. And that was where the term containment came from. We're going to contain communism, Truman said. And interestingly, uh, in 1947, the United States was having a philosophical and moral va uh, battle over whether to conduct research to develop a hydrogen bomb, which was a fusion bomb and far more powerful than the atom bomb. The scientists who worked on the Manhattan Project did not want to go forward with that. They were horrified by what their creation, the atom bomb, had done. So there was some infighting between the scientists, but there was a man by a scientist by the name of Edward Teller who really wanted to develop the hydrogen bomb. And what convinced Truman was that he couldn't he couldn't conclude that the Soviet Union wasn't racing after the hydrogen bomb as well. So on that basis, he said, proceed as quickly as you can to develop the hydrogen bomb. And that only heightened the paranoia for both the Soviet Union and the United States. So you can see that the Cold War is now escalated through the 50s. Mm -hmm. And I think that your basic question was, well, what was it like for me as a child? I really didn't 
I wasn't aware of the Cold War, except for two things. Early in the 1950s, when I was in grade school, uh, a fire drill was accompanied now by a duck and covered drill. Uh, And that meant hide under your desk, fold up in the fetal position and cover your head with your arms in the event of a nuclear bomb blast. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also know that that wouldn't do much against radiation, which could penetrate and over and infect us. Uh, But we didn't know that. We thought that duck and cover was a way to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then Sputnik. When Sputnik was released, that was the first uh, extra atmospheric satellite. Uh, And that was launched by the Soviet Union. Incidentally, quickly followed by the launch of the United States answer, Explorer 1, three months later. But what frightened everybody was that, including our government, was that we now knew that the Soviet Union had intercontinental ballistic missiles of the size and capacity that could launch missiles from the Soviet Union and hit cities in the United States. Mm -hmm. And once everybody, that made an impression on me, it certainly made an impression on our government, and that just accelerated the Cold War. Uh, and behind all this was the Red Scare, the second Red Scare, early in the 50s, led by a drunken senator by the name of Joe McCarthy and the McCarthy hearings, where just about everybody who was rumored to have any contact with the Communist Party was hauled before his committee. Uh, all rules of due process, rule of law were thrown out. These people were castigated. Lives were ruined. Careers were submerged. And this was all happening as a part of the Cold War dynamic, which was communism versus democracy. Yeah. Okay. All right, so next question. When you were a child, did you hear... Ever do you ever hear about people talking about nuclear weapons? Uh, not, not that I can recall. It, it there were you have to understand the culture of the times. Uh, Post World War II, first of all, going into World War II, the United States was extremely isolationist, politically isolationist. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the president. He he did not want to join in what he thought was a European war because it was politically unfeasible for him to take that position. And he wanted to be Mm reelected. Obviously, eventually, we participated in in World War II. But... Post World War II, the, the 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 generation of my parents, the greatest generation, some have called it, they had gone through the Great Depression of 1929, which lasted until the beginning of World War II. Mm-hmm. They had gone through World War II, the horrors of World War II. My father was at, I didn't see my much of my father for the first three years. He was in the Pacific. Uh, they did not want any of what had happened to them to be visited on their children. So they were very protective. And it was instinctive for them not to talk about scary things like nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. But I was a curious kid. Um, I saw the maps on the, in the newspapers that my father had on the kitchen table of uh, something called a Korean war, uh, something called, Dien Bien Phu, which was uh, the siege that drove the French out of then, we know it, we knew it then as French Indochina, it's now Vietnam. All these things were happening. I was getting the, and it was all, there was a talk, there was talk about communism, but nuclear threat was not something that was discussed in my home. And the where I first became aware of what is meant by a nuclear threat 
was when I was in high school in my history courses and in my political science courses and my civics courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So good. All right. Did you ever understand, or when you were younger, did you understand who the enemy was and how is the enemy typically portrayed in your society? Uh, yes. We were very aware of the, of the Soviet threat. Communism was discussed as the devil's work. The United States and democracy were the good guys. Soviet Union and the communists were the bad guys. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how it was formulated. We were even taught that. Yep. Uh, and I didn't have to wait to high school to get that propaganda. Uh, so, yes, I became aware of it when I was your age. Yeah. As you got older, did you understand even more, like, who the enemy was? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, my high school history courses, we had comparative um, philosophies about governance. So there was a comparison between Karl Marx, communism, Soviet Union's brand of communism, and democracy. Mm -hmm. um, a parliamentary mo monarchy like England with democratic overtones. So we, we were doing comparative government in high school. Yeah. But there was no doubt that communism was always the bad guy. There was, there was no... I, didn't, I can't remember a positive thing said about communism yeah. uh, back in high school. Okay. Uh, did your school ever have air raid drills during this era? Um, I talked to your grandmother, and we apparently we did. I, can't, I couldn't remember them because they were very similar to fire drills, yeah. uh, except that there was a different sound. The civil, civil defense controlled the air raids, and there was, uh, instead, of a, instead of a bell ringing for the fire drill, mm -hmm. there was uh, almost kind of a siren. Yeah. Different sound. Uh, and I couldn't remember that. Um, but she did. So I got, apparently we did. You know, we were kids. Yeah. You know. It was just a big joke to us. We didn't take anything seriously. We didn't know any better. Yeah. And, and also, you know, my parents uh, repeatedly told me, nothing's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. You live in a small town outside Rochester, New York. Yeah. And if the Soviet Union wants to bomb anything, it's going to be a big city. Yeah. Not going to be Rochester, New York, or Pittsburgh, New York. So... Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when you were younger, did you ever hear or see about hear or see a bomb shelter? Oh, uh, no. no. Nobody in my neighborhood had one, and in fact, I don't know that anyone in my small town ever ever built one. I don't remember anyone ever even talking about a a bomb shelter. But when I moved to Vermont, the house next door had one. And uh, once I became friends with the next door neighbor, I was given a quick look inside. I, I mean, it was full of things like garden hoses and it was, just, it was kind of a storage garage. But I do recall shelving for I, what I guess would be canned foods, um, rudimentary bunk bed against the walls and a huge iron door. Um, much I describe it as a bulkhead door. Get out! Get out! That you could bolt shut. Uh, and there was an air ventilator. Get out! I need to ask you something. No. Um, which was kind of funny because, as we know now, uh, uh, radiation would have been able to penetrate through that air air vent. But back in the day, who knew? Did shut the door? Nice. What do you? Yeah. Want? I can't eat. <laughs> Hi. Just go away. Just go away. She says hi. Okay. Okay, you don't get in there. Kitty, stop. Just go away. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, were you afraid? Were you ever afraid of nuclear weapons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, once you understood what the atom bomb had done to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the devastation, mm -hmm. uh, and that we were actively seeking to build a more powerful bomb called the hydrogen bomb or what the scientists who were working on the project called the super. That was, I, I forget how much more powerful it was than the atom bomb, but um, I was told that the hydrogen bomb could eliminate New York City. Mm -hmm. That made an impression on me. So yes, I was concerned about that. Uh, describe someone you admired during this period. Well, I would have to be my father. Uh, um, my father and I had a, uh, he was, he was strict. Uh, he had rules. He was a lawyer. He had rules and he expected me to follow his rules. Yeah. Um, which I did for the most part. Um, but he was also my best friend. He was my confidant. Um, he was my cheerleader. He supported me. Uh, we had talks about a lot of things over the years, and right up until the day he died, he was he was my closest friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question: What do you remember watching on television, hearing on the radio, or seeing in movies that were related to the Cold War? Um, scary movies. Uh, the space race opened up a whole new genre of uh, outer space movies. Uh, and War of the Worlds, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other movies, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. These are all creatures from another planet invading Earth. Mm -hmm. But it didn't take too much imagination to see a communist behind every alien. Yeah. And so that that was a pretty interesting, I think, comparison between the threat of communism and the threat of aliens from outer space. But you tie that into the space race, and it made perfect perfect sense. Yeah. And the movie producers were trying to make a buck, and what better way than a horror movie or a invasion from outer space movie? Yeah. And TV programs as well. Yeah. All right, so I actually have one more question. I recently okay. did a project about the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we're getting into the 60s. But yep. what were your feelings throughout the Cuban Missile Crisis? Uh, nervous. Uh, 1962, I was... 19 draft eligible we had the draft then uh the kennedy the john f kennedy deferments had not been implemented yet i was in college second my sophomore year in college so uh we were glued to the television set because the word was that if soviet union puts those missiles in cuba we're all going to get called up we're all going to be in the army or some branch of the service either drafted or will, in my case, volunteer to go mm. before they could draft me. Um, so we were watching television every night. And what's interesting is the Cuban Missile Crisis reeled back three years to 1959, and Fidel Castro was a folk hero in this country. Yeah. They did a Life magazine of uh, photo of journalists spread on him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a he was a Robin Hood like figure until he threw Batista out of Cuba and his his good friend and uh, and lieutenant Che Guevara who was a, was adamant about communism, hard communism, and Fidel Castro's went along with them. And almost overnight, 
Cuba became a communist state yeah. backed by the Soviet Union. So it was a yeah, it was a pretty concerning time. Yeah. Uh, because for the first time I wasn't in my bubble anymore. Yeah. I was vulnerable. I was out there. If if the Soviet Union puts missiles in Cuba, they're going to call up everybody my age and put a uniform on them and ask them to go fight. So that got my attention. Yeah. Okay. 